Hello lovely humans! Welcome back to yet another vlog. I feel like we haven't vlogged in forever. Oh, my hair's already falling out. Um, it was my birthday a few days ago and my sweet husband threw me a little surprise party with some of our dear sweet friends. Uh, so we still have some remnants just kind of left over hanging out. Most of which are just popped balloons on the floor. Today, however, is a very much garden-y, homestead-y kind of day. I've got my working overalls on, which I love these things. Hold on one sec, watch out guys. These are from Duluth. Let me see. Um, and they have like all the pockets. They're not form-fitting at all whatsoever, which I think is absolutely perfect. They don't stain. They have reinforced knees with like an area where you can put like a little knee pad in. Elias has their some sort of work pants from them in both khaki um, and camo. Just like all the pockets, all the things, just storage everywhere, which is so nice. Um, and I like that they are stain proof. So I wore these when I knew, oh, when I knew something was happening and I needed to fix my hair. <laughs> and I needed to have stain proof clothing on, but I'll show you that in just a sec. What is happening? So on the to-do list for today, we have some Russian Bocking 14 Comfrey, <laughs> big old mouthful that I need to plant. In fact, I should probably get it out of the fridge um, and get that ready to go. Although, do I need to soak it? I might need to soak this before I plant it. Basically, it's a specific type of Comfrey, which is a healing herb, very cool in most circumstances. But this kind can be used for livestock feed. So, thought that was fascinating. Very much looking forward to planting some of that. I would love to be pretty much independent when it comes to all of our animal feed. We're currently not there, totally fine, but I think it's interesting and fun to keep adding on to it. The main reason I am excited to be vlogging today, if you're over on Instagram, that is always where you're gonna find out information first. Um, and this is no exception to that. Hi. <laughs> we are gonna head out to the garden. Hi, baby. Look at this big old oaf of a dog. I believe he is only seven months old. That is wild. I don't even know if I filmed him properly. Hi, baby. He's a good boy. Hi, Steve. Um, and that is... We have goat babies! <laughs> Hold on. Hi. A good boy. A good teddy. Look at them. Look at them. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> so this year, kidding season, there's... Oh, okay. Okay, are you gonna let me film it all? <laughs> oh, I love this dog. He is so sweet. He's very needy physically, but he's very sweet. <laughs> Kidding season is officially over and we have six babies this year. So first up, who kidded first? Was it Lola or Cookie? I think, it, mm, I don't know. So we've got Lola. She has a singleton baby boy named Gilbert. And then the baby names are all gonna make sense in a second. Look at him, he's so cute. <laughs> And then Cookie actually had triplets, but we lost one of hers. Um, and her babies are in the far corner over there. Let me see if I can walk up near them, if they'll let me. Look at all those, that's so sweet. Thank you for doing that right on the walkway. We have Miss Patty and Suki. Um, and then we have, wait, which one's which? <laughs> we have Lorelai and Rory, and then Luke is over there. So you can tell that this year's theme was very much Gilmore Girl names. <laughs> so I have them out in the garden to try to eat down as much of this as possible because um, we've got plenty of green in here. Oh, don't headbutt that. We're trying to protect the, the mullen that somehow survived the winter because um, it actually takes two years to get flowers off of mullen and I missed my harvest season um, because the baby. I had the baby and I couldn't get out here to harvest the flowers and we just let it all die. So it was really cool to watch these pop back up. This must have come from um, the other plants going to seed. <laughs> Teddy. So I don't want the goats eating these because I don't want to wait another. I think this technically is still the first year, but like I don't want to lose these because um, Melinda is so rad. Look at Suki. Miss Patty's marking is my favorite. Lorelai and Rory are so cute. And we're officially like a week away from having goat's milk. So usually you wait until goat babies, the kids, are about two weeks old before you separate them from their moms at night. Um, and then we milk first thing in the morning. So they'll get plenty of milk throughout the day, but two weeks old is usually when you start like the nighttime process of separating. So as a matter of preference, we like to wait until all of our kids are two weeks old. So we don't have to like stagger 
starting milking, we just start them all at once. While they are out here just foraging, living their best life, this entire bed is all Queen Anne's lace. That stuff spreads like crazy. So hopefully they'll eat some of this down and I am gonna head on into the greenhouse and check on my seedlings. One of the things we will absolutely be doing today is picking up out here. It's just, it's just not fun to look at, right? And I don't know how some of these pots got all over the place. Obviously, you can see the pepper berm. So she likes to run all the way around the greenhouse and there's literally a berm right there. Do you see it? <laughs> so she just kind of loops around. That dog needs a job so bad. <laughs> and we lost the front door to the greenhouse. So we basically just need to unscrew this. Let's take a look. Oh, and they knocked that over. But let's take a look at how some, some of these seedlings are doing. I am not confident in soil blocking. In fact, I think I'm gonna take all of these and put them into pots simply because uh, this requires so much more attention than I thought it would. I've heard so many gardeners, home gardeners, whatever, talk about how awesome soil blocking is and how you don't need to store as much stuff. And I was like, sign me up, say less. Like, that sounds awesome. But then what I've come to realize is because it's not in a pot or in a seed cell, they dry out so fast. They require daily attention, which is not something that I'm used to giving or committed to giving. So I think I'm gonna take all of these because none of them are even close to sprouting um, and put them in four inch plastic pots. And just like, maybe next year we'll try again. <laughs> Maybe next year when I don't have a baby that like needs to be nursed to sleep every single day That's when I can try soil blocking, but right now it's not not that it's not the time. Let's see. Oh cool We've got some more flowers coming up. So this tray is all flowers, which is so fun I know all the sunflowers are gone. I think a mouse got in here and ate some of them um, Let me see. Do we have any peppers popping up yet? No peppers That's a bummer But tomatoes are going off I had to cover these up because something was getting in here eating them. Look at these! Oh, y'all are ready to be potted up. <gasps> okay, and I've also try been trying to keep track of germination rates, etc., to see how they're doing. Um, heirloom's got no action. That's so sad. <laughs> we'll give it some more time, though. But some of these varieties are doing super, super well. Um, I had more beefsteaks, but I think that mouse came in here and ate them straight down to the nub. So I should probably pot some of those up. And I of course have a second tray of tomatoes because I love tomatoes. Look at all these gorgeous. We've got Rutgers, we've got red pear, Marion tomatoes. One San Marzano's popped up. These are the best for tomato soup. Um, I think because they're low water content makes for a much, much better tomato soup. This is all herbs, and it looks like so far all we have is cilantro that's popped. Um, oh, and some rosemary. Oh, look, and some tulsi, some holy basil popped up too. Yes! Oh, this is addicting, coming out to check in on your plants. <laughs> White mustard, we're getting some of those true leaves coming up, so I'm probably gonna pot those up as well. Borage, looks like it could use some watering. We got some um, ashwagandha popped up back here. And then this is all cauliflower, cabbage, um, and broccoli. So we got some popping up there as well. But these are nothing, nothing whatsoever. I've got artichoke, I've got asparagus, I've got melons, cucumbers, no action whatsoever. So I think we're moving those over to those pots. And then what do we have here? Mullen, but for some reason this sprouted up and then died back. So I gotta look into that, um, but this also looks really dry. So we're just gonna be doing some plant maintenance today um, and moving those over into uh, larger size pots, but I'm not gonna give myself the treat of replanting anything until I get some picking up done, because right now is the mess. In fact, like this I was using to kind of block this door and now it's spilled over. We got lots of things going on. First things first, let's get moving on cleaning up some, some of this stuff and I'll try really hard not to be distracted by baby goats. <laughs> but I make no promises. just realized there's a ton of rainwater in these and it looks relatively clean so actually what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I am going to water um, and get this rainwater in there on them because it's going to be so much better for the plants than whatever I have in there currently so this is so funny to me it's like those things at Disneyland that like you have to like the turnstile they have to walk through <laughs> 
So I already have water in here, and I need to figure out what am I going to do with it. Maybe I should just put it in there um, so I can rain water all of this. That would be so awesome. Well, that's not going to work. Ah. Okay, well, I might as well just use this water then. so much left and still more rainwater to save out there that's awesome that thrills me to no end oh <laughs> they're your babies <laughs> that's because Luke got out baby I'll come get you <laughs> hey Silas you see the baby that got out can you help me real quick how did you get out little man Do you think you can catch him, baby? There you go. Keep it on the fence line, walk it back. Keep it on the fence line, walk it back. There you go. Good job, bud. Uh-oh. There we go. Yeah! Good job, bud. Thank you so much. Steve's got like a weed stuck in between his horns. Hi, baby. I know, but so it probably itches. There you go, is that, okay. Sir, this is how gates get broken. Steve, Steve, Steve. Oh my goodness. Look at those, <laughs> look at those horn marks. You punk. Now that I have all of that cleared off, I just have a couple of my larger, more decorative pots out there. I'm going to do a little bit of organizing in here because right now I need to free up all of this shelf space for the seedlings as they get potted up into the four inch plastic pots that I have. So um, I don't mind the terracotta being there. In fact, I actually really like looking at the terracotta, but I think I'm gonna get all of my soil, like soil amendments down on that bottom shelf over there. I don't even know why there's a brick. There's a brick. I don't know why there's a brick. And then let's all see if I can get these trays stored somewhere else as well to free up as much shelf real estate as possible as well as off this table. pot these bad boys up 
get them in some four inch pots because there's plenty of nutrition in the soil blocks. There's blood meal, there's bone meal, there is potting soil, but clearly my mix is just like sandy as heck. And if it requires daily attention, I'm just not in the season of life to do that. Maybe when I don't have, you know, um, a baby I'm breastfeeding or like that I have to breastfeed to sleep. <laughs> Details. So let's get these all moved up. So there's something about working with seedlings and with soil that makes my heart so dang happy. <sighs> okay. But sometimes I make, I make myself like do all my other chores first before I can do anything seedling related because I know it's such a treat. <laughs> so I have literally earned this today. Got two main channel videos done. Got it sent off to the editor. You know, we got, we're, we're thriving. Now we get to pot up some seedlings. This is my seed starting soil mix of choice. It's the Coast of Maine um, orga organic seed starter. Cool, and it's super enriched with uh, all these different goodies. So I typically like to dump it into a bucket because it makes it easier to work with. Let's get y'all raised up a little bit. Good job, bud. absolute shock right now. I saw a bug in one of the seedlings and I don't know what it was in. Frankly, I have no clue. Um, but I know for sure it's in these melons. It might have been in some of the other ones. And apparently it's called seed corn larva and it totally devastates melons. It eats the seeds. I can't, okay, so they're tiny little larva, like little worm-like things. If you get squeamish, skip ahead. Apparently they just decimate at least melons, and I don't know if they decimate anything else, but they are all, see that right there? They are all in here. I wonder if I'm gonna find some in here. Oh man. <laughs> yep. See them all in here? I think it's the blood meal that attracted them. Unreal because I've never used blood meal before. Oh, this is so depressing. So it doesn't look like these have sprouted at all or been eaten, but like they're just surrounded by all of these little larvae. And from my quick Google search, looks like the only thing that stops them is chemicals, which obviously we're not gonna do. Man, and I don't know how many of these have them. That is so very disheartening. <laughs> so I don't know if they affect anything else. I'm gonna keep potting up over here. I've got celery, okra, um, artichoke, and a couple other things, onions. I'm gonna keep potting these up. I'm pretty sure all of these melons are a lost cause. I just don't know if it affects the zucchini and the pickles. Why does it always have to be such a learning experience? Why can't it just be like, look, my garden's flourishing. What? <laughs> so when I made my soil blocking mix, I used bone meal and blood meal, like I said earlier, and apparently it's the, uh, the animal part of that that attracts them. So the adults come to lay their larva. 
I am so bummed out right now. And now that they're here, there's nothing I can do. Okay, we must soldier on, even though that makes me so sad. I mean, I, I don't want to give up on them. It's okay, I have more melon seeds. That just makes me so sad. Oh. I just checked and all of these seedlings, everything I did soil blocking with has seed corn larva. Well, little, little, little maggoty guys. Which means half of my crops, my little seedlings are not viable. There's a chance that it could slow the progress of the seedling, but the fact that none of these have sprouted yet, they've been super dry, my gut's just telling me that these are not going to be viable. Which is a huge bummer, but the good news is I have more seeds. I just don't have more seed trays. Um, so I think, <laughs> part of me just wants to call it and like not do anything else with plants today, because I'm really sad. And like, I just used so much good potting soil and seed starting mix. I just wasted so much money because I didn't know what that was. Not so much money, a bag of soil is not that expensive. I don't need to be dramatic, but like, my heart's so sad. <laughs> So I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna grab the seedlings. Oh yeah, we had to let the buck into the backyard because he's really bugging the females. They are not ready to be bred again. He is acting all sorts of frisky. I'm gonna bring the tomatoes in and a couple other ones, pot those up so then hopefully I can free up spaces in um, my seed trays to start other seedlings. I have about a tray and a half left that are empty. Maybe I do that. This is a lot less cheery than I expected. <laughs> 